And to me, this is the wonder of the cross. And that's point two, the wonder of the cross. Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. He'd accomplished the work his father had given him to do and he became the saviour of the world. And then through him, through this, we have firstly reconciliation with God. Sin had brought about the alienation, but through his death on the cross, reconciliation could now come about. And if you turn to 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. And it says, For Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. He might bring us to God, that he might reconcile us to God. And if you turn back a little to Colossians chapter 1 and verses 21 and 22. Colossians chapter 1 and verses 21 and 22. And although you were formerly alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds, yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. Isn't that wonderful? We who were formerly alienated and separated, now through his death, on the cross, we can now be presented to God as those who are holy and blameless and beyond reproach. Don't we all long for that? To be beyond reproach, that they have nothing against us. Yeah. You see, Jesus died taking the consequences of our sin in our place so that we could be reconciled to God how can we ever praise him and thank him enough for the wonder of the cross? That the Son of God was willing to die in my place and take my punishment on himself. And he did it willingly, even joyfully. You read that in Hebrews 12 too. For the joy that was set before him. He did it joyfully so that we could be reconciled to God. And he longs that we all should be one with him, just as he is one with the Father. And Jesus prayed for that in his high priestly prayer in John 17. That the barrier which sin had caused us to be separated from God, that it be broken down. And it was accomplished on the cross. When he said, it is finished, and it was done. Now we can be reconciled to God through the shed blood of Jesus. You know, we're so familiar with this. Does it still grab you with wonder? It should, especially at this time of the year when we think of it. You really should marvel afresh at the wonder of the cross of what Jesus Christ has done for each one of us. And this reconciliation with God means that we also now have release from bondage to self. See, with salvation comes the release from the tyranny of that bondage brought about by sin in ourselves. And instead of conflict and guilt within us, we can know his peace. If you're still at Colossians chapter 1, look at verses 13 and 14. Colossians 1 and 13 and 14. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. He's rescued us out of darkness and made us one with him so that there's no more fighting 
and conflict within ourselves. See, we become a new creation. The old things are passed away, the old bondage, and we can begin again as brand new, a brand new creation. Just as when Adam was first created and he had fellowship with God, now through Jesus, we can have this fellowship and be a whole new person. And as Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. He takes away that bondage and that guilt that we always felt within us, especially when we were struggling to do what was right and always knew that we failed and did what was wrong. Now there's no condemnation left. He's taken away all that bondage. And this is through the wonder of the cross. But it also means then that we're no longer in conflict with others, but it's replaced by love and unity. This is instead of always being at odds with each other and the rest of the world, of having no lasting inward peace. Jesus in us replaces that with his love and his peace. And then this is how we are called to walk in our new life. In Ephesians chapter 4, and I'll read verses 1 to 3. Ephesians 4 and 1 to 3. It says, Therefore I, a prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love and being diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And you can only do that when Jesus is in you. We know if we try to do it in ourselves, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't happen. But in Jesus, this is how we can be diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And in chapter 2, and from the second part of verse 14, it says in that that he broke down the barrier of the dividing wall, of that which always seemed to be between us and others, that we couldn't really live at peace with them. And in verse 16, he says, and he might reconcile them both in one body through God, one body to God through the cross, by it having put to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. You see, it's only through the cross of Jesus that we can live in unity with others, in love and unity. It's the only way we, we can reach them and is in the love of Jesus. And this he has done for us through the cross. It's only in him that we can be changed from our former selves and be made new in him and to be able to lo love others as Jesus loves them and to live in peace and unity with God and man. This is the wonder of the cross which enables us to keep moving forward in victory 